All right, I'm back. We are on page 252, uh, doing like the second problem. So I'm on the second graph. We just did the other stuff. Uh, so the graph of G is given. Use it to determine each of the limits and other values. So maybe we're not asked for limits for some of these. Um, all right, let's see. I think we can, I think we're at the point where we can like do these sort of quickly, uh, maybe. So let's find out. So when the limit as X approaches negative four, overall of g of x. So uh, when you get to negative 4, what is the function value? The function value is 1, so the logical value is, well, no, it doesn't matter what the function value is. Limit from the left, limit from the right, those are both 1, they're equal, so it's 1. What I did there was I used the fact that it was continuous. Excuse me, if a function is continuous, then uh, the value of the function equals the value of the limit. So if we know the value of the function, we know the value of the limit. So uh, that's what I get for that. I need to approach negative three from the left and see what I get. I don't know if you can hear my neighbor. Uh, it sounds like they're playing basketball or something or using an ax more likely. So three, negative three from the left uh, is one. The logical y value is one as you approach from the left. So one, uh, negative three from the right. So uh, as you approach from the right, you can see that logical y value there is three negative one from the left. All right, negative one from the left. So this is a boring point to be asked about a limit because look at x equals negative one, the y value is negative one, the function uh, from the left and the right approach negative one. So this is not a very exciting problem, but uh, that'll be negative one, and then this'll be negative one. And then am I asked overall? I'm not asked overall, so that's interesting. Limit as x approaches two, from the left, so two from the left is this part right here. So four would be the logical y value there. So as we understand things better, we'll go a little quicker on some of them. Uh, X approaches two from the right. So two from the right, let's see, like this looks like two. The logical y value there is two. So we're always doing the logical y value. We don't care about the value of the function which is hard for some people to let go of. All right, so now we come to this. What is going on? Well, we need the limit as x approaches four. And you can look at it and you can see that like the function is continuous there. The limit from the left equals the limit from the right. So the limit exists, the function exists. By definition, if the limit exists, the function exists and limit equals the value of the function, continuity. So it's continuous at that point. But what is the value? So we don't want to just estimate this, although on your own, you would pretty much have to do that. But I made these notes and I know what that function is. So what I did here was I took a square root function and I moved it two units to the right. I moved it two units up and then I reflected it. So this square root function is a really good function to know, by the way. Uh, you got your Square root, your one over x, x squared, every line, there's no excuse. x cubed is a good function to know. Absolute value of x. Uh, there's a lot of them. Sine, cosine, obviously. Uh, there's just a lot of them. Like any, any function you've worked with a lot, e to the x, um, you should know. Just recognize them when you see them. So I'm going to say that this is y equals. So I moved it to up. I reflected it, and then I moved it to the right. So it's actually this. This is the equation there. So the logical y value is the y value. So when I get to four, um, I'm gonna get, what do you get when you plug in four, right? So at x equals four, we would get two minus the square root of four minus two is two. Two minus root two. So that's the limit. And if you didn't work out the function, you wouldn't have gotten that one. So make sure that you are on top of things while you're doing these. All right, g of zero. Is g of zero hard to find? Mm, maybe. Uh, I mean, we're trying to find like that, the y-intercept. So what is the slope here? We got, this is three, and then this is what, uh, five? So slope of three-fifths. Okay, so if I start at this point, I start there, I'm at negative one. If I move over one, so 
So if I move one, I have to move up five thirds. So negative one plus five thirds is two thirds. So I'm gonna go with two thirds. And I use that technique a lot. The other option is to write the equation of this line, which would be y equals, so I'm gonna go with uh, negative one plus five thirds x plus one. And then when you plug in zero, you get negative one plus five thirds, negative three thirds, plus five thirds, two thirds. You get the same answer either way. It doesn't really matter. I like to do the slope thing because it's like a little more conceptual rather than algebraic, um, but whatever. So we get two thirds no matter what we do. G of three, uh, G of three is definitely one. You can read that off. G of two, G of two, we're trying to be tricky here, right? So at two, the logical Y value is, th there is no logical Y value, right? Because the limit from the left and the limit from the right aren't equal to each other, no logical Y value. The actual Y value though is up here at four. I am making a mess of this graph. Um, so the actual value is four. And then we have that really interesting idea where the limit from the left equals the value of the function, which does not equal the value from the right, the limit from the right. So limit from the left equals the value of the function. So we could say that this function is left continuous at that point, which just means that someone walking from the left gets the value that they expect while a person walking from the right doesn't. That's left continuous. If it was right continuous, a person walking from the right would get the value they expect, while a person from the left doesn't get the value they expect. That's basically what it means. Um, and in later notes, we're gonna deal with that like extensively, but uh, it's always good to like have these ideas in mind while you're like going through things. All right, the next one. I recognize this immediately. It looks like uh, question H from the previous problem. This is slope. This question is asking you for slope. I would like half of calculus is asking you about slope. So this is slope. And we're not gonna fall for it because those values are gross negative 0.4, 1.3, are you kidding me? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna use a highlighter this time to continue messing up my graph. Um, I'm gonna look at just the slope of this, right? No matter what I do on there, the slope between any two points on that line segment, which uh, 1.3 and negative 0.4 fall in that interval, that slope is gonna be 5 thirds no matter what. So, five thirds is my answer here. So do the easier problem. Don't immediately start subbing in, getting values, subtract, like think it through. And then we got this question. Based on the graph above, identify each X value where the limit fails to exist. Why does it fail to exist? Oh, that's why I didn't ask you for those limits in the last thing. So where does the limit fail to exist? Well, negative three. Definitely at negative three. So I'm gonna say the limit as x approaches negative three of, oh, it's actually g of x. g of x does not exist because the limit as x approaches negative three from the left of g of x. So see, I'm writing all this out. It's like, calculus is a lot of writing. Um, the limit from the left is one, while the limit as x approaches negative three from the right is whatever we got, is three. So that is why the limit doesn't exist. And then the other place, if you look at our graph, is at two, and I'm gonna write basically the same thing, but I'm gonna fill in the correct values. So the limit as x approaches two, ooh, bad two, two of g of x does not exist because the limit as x approaches two from the left of g of x is two from the left was four while the limit, or you say but, or and, or there's a lot of, uh, you can connect these in a lot of ways. x approaches two from the right of g of x is, what do we get there? We got two, hopefully. 
I'm like, I have it up on another computer. So I'm looking at that so that I can like, you know, go through it without a problem. Who knows? All right. So that's the bottom of this page. We're done with page 252. I think what I'm gonna do is stop this particular video here. And obviously I will be back uh, in another video to keep going. So hope you're finding these helpful and uh, see you in the next one.